5. Okay, starting the microphone checks with the podium. One, two, three. Check one, two, three, one, two, test, test, podium. Mic number one, mic number one. Check, check, check. Time to play 21, presented by Geritol. Mike number two, Mike number two. Sorry, I just saw a quiz show. Good movie, directed by Robert Ripford. Go see it, it's from the 90s. Mike number three, Super Mike, Super Mike, Mike number three, 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 Super Mike. Mike number four, President Mike. One, two, three, Pres Mike, Pres Mike. Mike number five, one, two, three, four, five, check, check, number five. And Mike number six, six, Mike number six, check, check, one, two. Hopefully it didn't sound like any feedback. I had to readjust the levels for everything. So hopefully uh, it sounded okay. Uh, if it does, I'll wait for your text. Great. Okay, I'm going to uh, mute for 10 minutes until we're ready to start. Muting here in 3, 2, 1.
you. Oh. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. We're going to start our public session on the uh, budget. The nice thing is our Board of Education has worked uh, very hard along with the central administration team, our administrators, and supervisors to build a budget for our community that we are um, very happy to uh, put out to vote on May 16th. I know our community understands the mission of Grain Island is to inspire all students to achieve their highest potential while fostering academic excellence, personal growth, and social responsibility. As always, our budget is built around our strategic plan. We have a five-year strategic plan. Mr. Loria will be leading the review of that strategic plan coming into this next uh, school year. But the goals of the strategic plan are embedded in our budget, as well as our normal budget goals that talk about developing a long-term sustainable budget designed to provide the best diversified education program for all of our students starting at Universal Pre-Kindergarten. Also, we try as best we can to maintain all of the community-mandated programs and activities that people love so much in our school system as well as uh, always fighting to make sure we protect our fund balance. I'd like to turn it over to Ruby Harris to uh, hear more about the budget this year. All right, so we now have an enacted budget. Um, so I will go through this since I was not able to do that the last however many meetings we had uh, to get this far. Um, so as you know, Foundation Aid has been fully funded. Um, there were no formula changes included in the enacted budget, nor were there funds set aside for that review. Um, so we really don't know what's going to happen next year when it comes to the foundation aid formula, if there will be changes or um, what the recommendations will be. But it has been fully funded finally. Um, something that was discussed about and is actually happening a little bit different than I think people imagined it would, but. Um, definitely a step in the right direction, is universal meals to all students. And I know it says to all students, but that does not mean all students will be eating free. There will be qualifications. Um, it's a slow roll with that information, which I assumed it would be. Uh, so how they deem districts to qualify or not qualify is still forthcoming. Uh, something that we do know, though, is there are some possible changes to the community eligibility program which is a program that's been around for a while um, if school districts direct certification means meaning your snap and medicaid uh, students that qualify through the state system if it was 40 percent for the school district all the students within the district could eat for free i'm hearing that they may be lowering that to 30 if not 25 percent so that will be very interesting because you may even have buildings that qualify and other buildings that do not. So that's just something that is forthcoming as we learn more and no one will share it, but it's a little up in the air uh, as I anticipated with it being um, presented to her and then being approved that way. Uh, as you are aware, universal pre-kindergarten aid um, is roughly the same amount you saw when uh, it first came out in the executive budget, there were no changes in the formula. So each student has a allotted slot amount of $5,400. They have not increased that. Um, a lot of districts who do not currently have a program will struggle with that because it's not enough to start and fund a program. That is something that I know we will concentrate on more in the future, just to uh, let the state know, <laughs> let the state know um, that if they want people to participate in this, then at least include a startup cost for districts that are new or opening new classrooms to allow for it. Uh, there was a little bit of inclusion in reference to the zero emission bus progress report. They did push that back to the 2024. 2025 school year when we start actually reporting where we stand um, what studies you've done where you are in the process of buying we're, we're making assumptions of what will be in the report but um, they did push that back a little bit 
uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, one thing that we have had a lot of advocacy behind is the duplicate reporting. So we submit a transparency report to the state in the summer, late summer, and then we have an ESSA report that provides the prior year's information in the winter. And it was just, it's redundant, but the reports are completely different. So I can't even just use the same information after we create everything. Um, because there was no action taken, this form is set to sunset June 30th, 2023. So that's one less report that we have to do. No, it wasn't more money, but it's, it's nice to not have to do it now. Um, and then there were some employee relations uh, and civil service items. So I just put here uh, very briefly about the fact of not only reaching the $15 an hour, but also the push by 2020, ooh, I want to say 2017, but it's not. The push to reach by 2027, uh, $17, and then moving based on inflation and them excluding some information, but that's just something that's coming down the pipeline. So um, I know Dr. Graven, myself and Mike um, had a conversation briefly. One thing, you know, just keep an eye on is contracts, those sorts of things as those things are raised. Any questions there? Okay. So uh, just a, maybe I do. Okay. So minimum wage right now, 1420, it should go up to 15 by January 1st. Yes. Okay. And then um, what so, it looks like the next year, next two years is about 50 cents. And then however inflation flows or whatever they decide that that calculation looks like to pace with inflation. Thank you. All right, so then we have um, two areas here. The top area is the 2023-2024 budget request inclusions, and then the bottom area is the 2023-2024 grant funded inclusions. I know last meeting um, that was something that was requested, so I figured it went perfectly here to see them together. Um, so these are all of the items that we have worked uh, over the last couple of months to decide whether we were supporting them and including them or if it was something that would be a future consideration. So we have the increase of the art teacher position from a 0.4 to 0.5. Um, we had a 0.5 FTE English and that person also is a teaching assistant. We are um, just utilizing same body, um, but making a 1.0 FTE English teacher. Um, we had the 1.0 elementary teacher for Kegamine, and as uh, we've mentioned before, we are monitoring kindergarten enrollment uh, to see how that fits. Um, we also have community relations, that's currently a 0.5 FTE, that's going to increase to 0.6. Uh, we have the SRO increase, still being part-time, in general, but um, from a 1.0 to a 2.0, the cybersecurity and data protection officer position, uh, flag football for girls, the high school elevator, you do not see a dollar amount there. Um, we will cover that through the architect uh, business office budget. We're actually going to split it. We're going to cover the equipment ordering now because it takes about eight weeks and that will be installed before the school year starts. And then we have the transfer to food service. Um, I want to say that in the event that we were to qualify for all children eating fee free or um, qualify for C, um, CEP program, either one, um, that this amount, though it's designated there, could be utilized for other things. Uh, it's not like gridlock there, and then in the future it would just be something that would be considered based on a couple of years of review of say, hey, $100,000 may not be needed, maybe it's 10000 or fifteen. Um, but that is just something I wanted to mention. So if it's not necessary, it's not funds that will go to that area. And then these are the grant inclusions. So that is the restorative practices training, the freshman, tra freshman transition program, um, the tech department, as well as the PE uh, fitness center replacement that first year, and fake detectors, and youth mental health first aid, which I think is starting within the next. I know some do. Yes. Okay. And yeah. Yes. Ruby, this these this slide just 
yes. this duplicate. Or, yes, yes, it is a duplicate. Like you just shared. Yes, I do like to include this because it provides the big picture of what we really worked through, right? These were all the things that initially um, were the <clears throat> current upcoming school year requests, and it allows us to keep those things at the forefront of our mind as we plan for the future. Okay, this is proposition number two. Um, you will see that the current 22-23 school year um, request is the same dollar amount that we are requesting for next year. Um, that allows us to include three 65 passenger buses, one 29 passenger bus, and two Ford F-350s um, for buildings and grounds. And this just kind of breaks down um, a reminder of what's going on in reference to cost increase, cost increase for everything. Uh, especially after COVID, and then it also um, reminds us that this has an actual impact to the 2024-2025 budget because it takes a year to pay the debt, and um, also the process of bond borrowing. We have included uh, another year of capital outlay. Um, we got a lot of great things this year, but I will say I'm sad to say that this didn't go up. Uh, to 250000 it'll be something that we continue to push for in the future, but um, I think the things that we did receive or were able to win uh, were a huge benefit for all school districts. But the capital outlay is a $100,000 project that can happen annually. We receive about 70% of aid back on these, so they're great projects to do. This gives some examples. It's not necessarily what in any end in any order of what will be done. Um, but within probably the coming months, the board will see something um, to allow us to move forward with the state. So that'll be something that's forthcoming, but we uh, are happy to do this each year. And I know we have spent, uh, I think it's the last two years we've been talking about um, door access. So there's been ordering and there will be installation at Keith. Proposition number three is the capital reserve fund. Um, this reserve fund, it, the vote of yes, allows the reserve fund to be established. We will not have $10 million to put in there. Um, instantly, the last time we had a vote, it was in 2008. The term of that capital reserve fund was 15 years. And you will see also the amount that we were able to fund up to and we did use those funds. So now we're just trying to establish a new one to plan for capital projects moving forward. This breaks down um, some great information in reference to the process and the steps in regards to the capital reserve fund. Um, the capital reserve and also there is a another reserve, um, they're very similar are the most restrictive reserves that exist for school districts. They require voter approval to be established, right? Any other reserves, so if I came in and said, hey, we want to have a workers' comp reserve or an ERS reserve, that's simply something that administration would bring to the board, explain the importance of it, and the board could vote to say yes. Um, capital reserve does not function that way. So the voters have to say, yes, you can establish it. Um, that is what we are hoping for at the May 16th uh, vote. And then the upon the external audit and uh, the review of financials, the Board of Education will say, yes, we agree with putting funds in the reserve. And then when a capital project is decided upon and created, we put that out to vote you then have to have the public vote to draw the money out of the reserve. So there's a lot of public input. Um, I think that's great, right? It's, and I understand, right, Ten, when you, people see $10 million, it's a sticker shocker. But the process that districts have to take make sure that all of those things are in place so the money is not misused, it's not a slush fund, it's really being used for what the plan is and that the community is supporting through voting for a capital project. Um, and then these also list some of the benefits, right? You're paying um, less interest, that you're paying also less in debt issuance expenses. Um, you are getting more building aid in reference to, hey, I paid this, but 
but the state is aiding you at your percentage of aid, um, and it also helps with the tax cap calculation, so you're creating some stability there as well. This is just a summary of major expenditures. These are all the different um, major areas that make up the budget. We do like to show this just so you can kind of get a breakout of a comparison from one year to the next and what that percentage of difference is. I'm not going to read each one of these, but it just provides a, a nice snippet of, hey, this is what's going on in the budget, and these are where the dollars are specifically going code-wise. This breaks um, that information you just saw uh, down a bit further, and it allows you to see it based on subgroups. So you have your large area, which is the HR side. You have instructional programs, each individual school building, and a description of what is going on there. So when you see some of the elementary buildings and it looks like they're getting large dollar amounts, it's really moving funds into the appropriate code. Um, we have groups and textbook funds uh, probably two and a half years ago um, when there was a little bit of a hole <laughs> there and we were trying to figure out how to properly plan for that but um, through discussion with other administration we decided to put the funds back into the buildings we plan with the buildings administrators and we think it'll work well moving forward and this just continues to break down the different subgroups. It allows you to see debt service and some of the um, changes from principal interest as well as the bus bonds. Um, any transfers to different areas that have increased, which you'll see transfer to food service. And then it shows the revenue side of state aid, the tax levy, and then other revenue. This should look very similar to what you saw uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, this is just a breakdown into um, the aid categories, but also the what sometimes feels like miscellaneous revenue. Um, so you will just see those different areas laid out, like sales tax, your BOCES aid, um, we budget for interest, uh, pilots, and tuition. And then you also have the appropriated fund balance. And you only use the appropriated fund balance if it's necessary to budget to balance the budget in the end. Um, so that is something that I always hope is not fully used. This is a breakout of the tax cap calculation. Um, it shows the prior year and the percentage being 5.59%. You will actually see that once uh, all of the information came in, including the assessed values on the island, it was four point, I'm guessing that's a six nine. My eyes are a little blurry there. Um, 4.69%. And then you will see the current school year's tax cap calcula calculation, which is 3.33 um, projected as a percentage, and then future years. So that kind of just gives us a comparison point as we look back. So what that means, all those numbers you saw on the last page, um, brings us over to this. Then the 3.33% is a 56 cent increase. And that is looking at comparing the 2022-23 actual to what we are estimating. Um, you will see highlighted at the bottom just what we were projecting in 2021-22 and 2022-23 and how those actually came in. This is included in what we call our budget book. The budget book is online. There is also one in each one of the buildings with a sign of it can't be removed, but you can go through it. Um, and this is a nice chart that just kind of shows you what our trends have been, um, where the projected tax rate has been in a dollar amount and a percentage, as well as where it has come in in actual. So um, this just provides a nice graphic of these are the things that have taken place over the last 10 years for Grand Island. Then you have a requirement to show this in a three-part budget in the um, bridge. This is also shown as a little bit different. I just put a snippet here. Um, so you have administrative pro program and capital. And you will see program makes up 71% of the budget. And that's not just a grand island thing. That's awesome. Um, and then this takes each one of those um, we have function, object, location, but function is the first four 
uh, numbers in a school district's accounting system. So these are broken out based on function, and it will give you a little descriptor, and then it shows you prior year and current year for what is upcoming, and then you can just do a, a comparison to the graphs make it pretty. <laughs> if you're a visual person. And it does that for each one. So this is not just being shown to you, but it is also included in the budget book that is online and in school buildings um, and program and then capital. So it's just a nice way to see how we've been performing and where we think we'll be next year. And a favorite chart, fund balance. Um, nothing has changed, nothing will change until the audit occurs. Um, so you'll get new information come late September, early October of how the current school year performed and then it will be um, through the conversation with the administration and direction from the board, it will be decided what areas receive um, those extra funds if you have additional fund balance. This takes everything I said and makes it look really nice in a quick uh, one shot, um, but it really just breaks down your revenue, um, your major expenses areas in reference to salary benefits and other costs, and then you can't see it here, but it has a zero at the bottom because the budget is balanced. So our recommended proposed budget is $73,727,888. Um, we have enough revenue and expenses, so that means there's a zero gap in the balance budget. And then I think it's always important to discuss contingency. Um, so a contingency budget occurs if the budget is not approved by voters. There are some adjustments that have to, well, let me rewind a little bit. The first thing that would occur if a contingency budget happened is we would come back, we would work on the budget, have discussion with the Board of Education, and we have two options. You can put the budget out to vote again, or you can go directly into a contingency budget. But there are things that are taken out of the budget to be compliant with the contingency budget. So the levy, the tax levy that is levied cannot be greater than what you currently have. So that means $1.2 million has to come out of the budget. And this just breaks down usual areas that are a requirement under contingency to be taken out is anything that pertains to capital that's unnecessary. So we would not be doing the capital outlay project. You have other um, equipment items that the state says you have to take out. But you'll see here that out of $1.2 million that would have to be taken out, Capital only accounts for 276000 So the other million dollars is a direct hit to students. And this just breaks out that if we had to take that million out, well, 1.2 of the million away from students, that the per pupil expenditure decreases $357 um, per student. And it's not easy to find a million dollars to just take away. So I think it's always important to explain to the community what that looks like. And this is just my reminder to come up and vote on May 16th. Uh, I'm sure Dr. Graham and myself and some board members will be here all day. Um, and I'm, we hope that you support the budget. And if, I think people can, okay. And if anybody has any questions, you can ask them. I may not know all the answers, but I'll try. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we'll take a two-minute break before we begin our regular meeting.
there. <laughs> and that's like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I have Jack on there too, so I don't have January. But when we go, I put a demo in the Magic Bands yeah. too. They have the sensor in the Magic Bands, so in case I get lost, it's just like, it's 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 like, it's
Hi, I'm Jessica Cam. I'm a senior at the high school. AP exams have been going on both this week and last week in the high school back gym. Great job to those who have already taken them, and good luck to students taking one this week. Two weeks ago, Grand Island High School Spotlighters Club successfully performed two student-written and directed plays. These murder mystery themed shows started with The Stairs, written, by, written and directed by Kathleen Prozik and myself, then was followed by Maya Noack's play The Only One. This was an amazing learning experience for both the directors and actors. We would like to thank our amazing advisor, Miss Kennedy, and our light and sound crew led by Mr. Gorton for all their hard work and support. Last week, many Grand Island faculty and staff were recognized by some of our high school seniors at the Celebration of Inspiration event for going above and beyond their job and positively influencing many students. This event was extremely memorable and emotional for everyone involved. Grand Island High School will be holding another Connect Life Blood Drive tomorrow, Tuesday the 9th, to help save hundreds of lives. Thank you, Mr. Simpson and Mr. Noison, for helping organize this event. In addition, the National Honor Society induction ceremony is tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Congratulations to all the new members. Junior Prom is coming up this Saturday, May 13th, at the Bellingwood. This will be an exciting and memorable, memorable event for all who attend. And then Senior Prom is coming up on June 10th at Aqua from 6 to 10 p.m. Following that prom is Post Prom at the high school from 10.30 to 3 a.m. The Post Prom Committee is still looking for donations to help it run like it has in the past. Lastly, our high school's masterminds team will be going to playoffs soon. Good luck to everyone involved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is our correspondence recognition and good news, and we have our merit award for our music department. It is no secret that we have one of the, well, think, the best music department in Western New York, and we are a recipient of the 2023 Best Communities for Music Education Merit Award again this year. Yeah, so great. Year, year after year, we win. Maybe Sarah. Come to the podium and add a little color to this fantastic endeavor. Uh, this recognition is from the National Association of Music Merchants, recognizing um, some of the best communities in the area for music education. And I want to, um, we do have some, a lot of our um, music staff here tonight, because we're proud to be in this community. It's really a community recognition. It's the teachers and the students and the families, but also the administration, the board that allow music to thrive and prosper in our thing. So when it does say um, best community, that is our Grand Island community that we're very privileged to be in. So this is a recognition for everyone. Sarah, can we introduce some of the music Yes, we have, um, Maybe they could come up yeah. the podium. Yeah, we have Renee Mitchke, um, K5 coordinator in Kegabine, and from here, and we have... Yeah. 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 we're doing like, this is like, let's make a deal of prices, right? And then Christine Sweely from Sidway, we have Carissa Sugar from Hugh Road, and Mark Hughes from the high school. Oh, and Elliot Mitchell. Elliot Mitchell. Sarah, would you join the board uh, and all the music teachers for one group picture? That would be great. We'll stand in front. Uh, if the board could join us, we'll get a great picture.
did not have anyone sign up for the public comment session of agenda items only. So that will bring us to curriculum and instruction with Mr. Moria. Thank you very much. We just had two informational items on our agenda tonight. The first is our April curriculum report, which you can read at your leisure. Um, the second, I just want to briefly mention, is an update that um, Dr. Leslie Morris, who uh, passed away years ago, and his wife, Dr. Sharon Kramer, has generously donated funds through our library programs at various schools throughout our district for over a decade. Um, this past month, Tuesday, April 25th, we had our county PTA meeting, and Dr. Kramer was here in attendance, and we were able to present with her all of the books, uh, book display of Rachel Grayback in the school library, um, put together a beautiful display of the diversity texts that were purchased this year through her, her uh, donation, and we got to celebrate some of those and see her here. It was a really great evening to thank her for all of her generosity throughout the years. And I did actually email with her today, and she got her final report and indicated that we will be receiving another do donation for next year. And we will be working next year with Jet Auk over at Sidway. So our youngest readers will be benefiting from the donation, and we look forward to selecting those texts um, within the next coming month working together. So once again, just want to thank um, the project and, and in honor of her husband, Leslie Morris. We really appreciate it. And, um, enjoy giving the gift of reading and making a good community friend in the meantime. So thank you. Thank you. Moving on to personnel instructional. Um, if I could have a motion to approve PI1 through PI5 with an adjustment to PI5, uh, Kayla is hired as a building based sub at Heath Road. I'll motion. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 7-0. And um, do we have any we do. instructional? Yes, we do. Uh, Hillary, would you uh, come up to the podium? Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to congratulate Hillary Kretz Harvey for her appointment this evening as mm -hmm. our high school principal. Hillary achieved her Bachelor's of Arts degree in Psychology from Geneseo in 2001. Uh, she went on to continue her studies at RIT uh, for her Master's degree in School of Psychology, and from there, graduated with a perfect 4.0 GPA. She worked successfully at Fredonia as a school psychologist, I believe, 2004 to 2019, and uh, completed an internship as an administrator at Fredonia in the 2017-2018 school year. She received her Certificate of Advanced Study in School Building Leadership from Upstate in 2018. She was appointed as high school assistant principal on July 15, 2019, since then, Hillary has been a leader uh, bringing in a new program for restorative circles to be introduced not only in her school, but throughout the district. The work uh, was interrupted a bit by COVID, uh, but we're, we've been so glad uh, to restart and have that reinvigorated across our district over the last few years. Hillary has also served as a high school summer school principal, and she has served as our interim principal this school year. We are very pleased uh, to promote her to high school principal, and this position, uh, we expect it'll be a fantastic uh, opportunity for continued growth and leadership, uh, not only uh, for our students academically, but socially, emotionally, and for them to continue on a path of uh, personal growth. So please, everybody, join me in congratulating Hillary Kretz Harvey. to be appointed as the Grand Island High School principal tonight. I am very excited and eager to continue my work with this wonderful school community um, and to work collaboratively to achieve our shared vision and our goals. I thank you for the trust and confidence that you've placed in me by selecting me to continue this work at our high school. I have been an educator for over 20 years and as Dr. Graham shared, I began my work here at Grand Island High School in July of 2019 as an assistant principal and this year serving as the interim principal. These past four years have been some of the most challenging years in our careers for all educators, and especially for someone joining a new district right before the pandemic began. With that being said, there really is no other team of students and educators that I would have wanted to go through these last four years with. The current school year, we have made quite a bit of progress in a lot of areas. I'm really excited about the opportunities and possibilities that await us in the coming years. 
I'm optimistic about the potential that we have and the achievements we are going to accomplish as a team here at Grand Island High School. We have fantastic students and teachers. I am looking forward to continuing to serve this community and lead our high school. Thank you again for your trust and support. That's great. Hillary, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I see you brought some very important people in your life. Uh, so kind as to sure. introduce them to the board? Of course. I have my husband Nate with me tonight, my daughter Natalie, and my daughter Reese. Unfortunately, my son Rocco is homesick tonight. Oh, uh, I know this may be a little uncomfortable, but can everybody stand? <laughs> <laughs> they were not here for that. Round of applause. Well Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. to personnel non-instructional if I could have a <coughs> moving on to personnel non-instructional if I could have a motion to approve PNI 1 and PNI 2 please with the adjusted start date for Kelly Ann of 5-9 2023 all in favor aye, aye. any objections any abstentions Motion carried 7 0. That brings us to finance with Dr. Harris. So, before I go through um, half the alphabet here, um, the items that are on here, I know that John wanted to do an introduction for one of the donations, so I'm going to let him do that first. And then I'll go yeah, that's great. Thank you, John. Thank you. Mr. Dalstrom, would you join me, please? Sure. Members of our Board of Education and the Grand Island community, I would like to present this chess set and introduce Mr. Gary Dahlstrom. Mr. Dahlstrom, a Grand Island resident and whose children graduated from our schools, Eric in 2000, Jolie in 2002, and Casey in 2006, is well known for his woodworking skills in our community and across Western New York. He got his start in wood carving on a Boy Scout weekend in 2004 after being given a knife and a piece of wood from another carver on the trip. He continues to work with the Boy Scout troops on Grand Island teaching their scouts wood carving. This chess set that you see in front of you was created by Gary from a fallen basswood tree in Boston, New York. Basswood is a wood carver's favorite wood due to its tight grain and relative softness. After this tree was removed from the woods, it was milled into boards at a sawmill in Holland, New York, and then spent two hours in, or excuse me, two years in Gary's garage drying. After the moisture content was dry enough, the rough cut boards were then cut into the approximate size chest pieces, and after that, sharp knives were used to carve each piece. Carving each piece is a slow and meticulous process. The castle was created from the same basswood tree. The four sides are each one piece with grooves cut with a V gouge to resemble the bricks. The four corners were made using woodworking tools, including a table saw, bandsaw, and a router. The chessboard was made using maple and walnut. The wood was cut into strips and then glued together, alternating light and dark colors. They were cut into strips again, perpendicular to the first cut. And after realigning the strips in a checkerboard pattern, it was glued again. The border was then created and glued into, into place, outlining the squares. The carving time for the pieces, the chessboard creation, and the castle creation took over one year. After it was finished, this chess set won a ribbon at the 2018 Erie County Fair wood carving competition. It was on display at the Castellani Art Museum of Niagara University in 2019 and the Herschel Carousel Factory Museum in North Tonawanda in 2021. Mr. Dalson, we so appreciate this donation to our chess club, and we thank you very much.
Gary, would you like to say anything about uh, this meticulous and extraordinary work? Well, I'm thrilled. This has a, uh, a home that would appreciate it. Instead of my closet collecting dust. <laughs> so I'm thrilled to have a nice home for it. That is awesome. Would you and our team join the board for a picture with the chessboard on the side? Yeah, if, if, if the board would be so kind as to come up, we'll do one more photo. Oh, yes. So, yeah, we are going to display it in the library. We're going to get a case. And then during a chess club, we'll allow students to use the chess This would be a wonderful thing to, we're establishing a, a woodworking class and it will start next year, so I don't want to jump up and start it yet this year. It would be great. I mean, I don't want to... I'd love to be about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the teacher would love to have you. I mean, I'm, I don't want to speak on behalf of the teacher or anything, but I know as a teacher, I, I'm a teacher and I would be very excited to have someone with your level of expertise speak to my class. So hopefully well, yeah. I've learned my teaching wood carving to uh, boys and boy scouts. There's never enough adults around it, and I just ban these out. Hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Thank you, Penny. And so I just want to go ahead. I just want to say real quick before, before he leaves, I've, I've known the adults from family. I I think from the time their kids were very young and and not only is he an amazing wood carver, he's an amazing bird that took the correct term. And your, is it you and your son and daughter-in-law, right? And they also have been recognized and put on display at the Erie County Fair. So woodworking and wood burning is really a family passion. So you guys are very, very talented, and I, I appreciate that you donated that test site to Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, John did fire and I'm happy for that, so that's beautiful, uh, and that's what looks really cool. Um, so, on to my half of alphabet. Uh, we have some obsolete vehicles that are being listed here. Um, we also have obsolete buses and obsolete equipment um, lockers. We have a donation um, pertaining to tops. We have the beautiful chess set uh, that we just were able to view as a donation. There is also on tonight's agenda a woodworking course account request. Um, this is in a little bit of a weird place, but based on uh, Hillary reaching out and having the discussion, I just wanted to make sure the board was aware that there was going to be 
it's really a class, pillar to left, but it's really more in the class side, so it's not something in the area of club, but there will be funds there, so we just like to make sure the board is aware and taking action. We have the Driving Academy contract. Um, this has increased. They are the only company that are willing to offer it, so uh, I say yes as long as we get enough students to participate, so that's really parents saying yes to signing a check um so we do offer it but they are the only and where be this is uh, the money self-generates the yes, so yes. if you don't have enough students then we don't run the course correct um and then we also have the food service audit and corrective action plan um i will say since this is a bit lengthy and dr graham had questions about it everything uh, in that packet just because it's listed there does not mean that was a finding for grand island the New York State um, Food Service Department, when they come and they do audits, they have a set list. They respond based off of that, so they will create check marks or they will highlight areas that are specific to the school, but we did want to include it in its entirety, and the corrective action items were not, usually we create the corrective action and we the board to approve it, and it's, it's not optional, <laughs> the state says, this is what you need to do to comply. So we will work um, on getting ourselves into compliance. There will be some discussions um, outside of just food service with different uh, clubs and things they're selling and making sure we're complying during the school day as well. Um, and I think those are all the action items. If I can have a motion for A through H, please. I'll motion. And a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 7 0. Cheryl's trying to steal the mic. Um, the next couple of items on here are informational uh, for informational purposes. So you have the extracurricular report um, on the agenda. You have budget transfers that are under 15000 um, I know there were some additional questions about American Rescue. So uh, we supplied the detailed information um, that we actually just created for the state as we go through their review of all of the COVID funds. So we um, supplied that. And the last item on here for information pertains to stop loss and the premium amount. Um, so there was clearly an increase uh, in the area of premium, but it is not outside of what we budgeted for stop loss for the upcoming year. We are not, um, I know in the past sometimes we will have the talk about increasing the deductible and whether it's worth it or not based on how much you save in premium, we are going to keep the deductible remaining where it's at and we'll see how it goes as we do each year, but that's just for informational purposes. That is it. Thank you. Any questions about the informational items? Okay, thank you. And so we will move on to special education, pupil, personal services. It looks like we need action on couple programming. We are at the tail yes. end of our annual reviews. So CPSC and CSC um, recommendations are in your board packet. So if I can have action on those, please. Okay, motion for A and B, please. All, All second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. Any objections? Yeah. Any abstentions? Motion carried 7-0. And that brings us to the superintendent's report with Dr. Graham. Good evening, everybody. I do want to um, highlight uh, Mr. Austin and his work as a community relations specialist. Uh, he, if you, uh, he's creating some web pages under the tab of community. Here, you'll see um, the bridge in its digital format. Uh, over many years, you'll, you'll get a chance to see that. And he is working on a digital eBridge as well. There was an eBridge that was sent out on March 24th, and uh, that's visible here. It comes digitally to your inbox. And um, he sent out another eBridge uh, just this weekend. So hopefully people are getting a chance to, to take a look at that. So we thank him for all his work in this area. Uh, additionally, uh, there's a lot to celebrate. Uh, just, just, there you go. I just I couldn't see that. I can now I'm all set. <laughs> so um, 
I believe in an upcoming board meeting, we're going to have an opportunity to congratulate our the mechanics in our transportation department, uh, Brett Staub and Mike Young and Jesse Popovitz and uh, Zachary Belding, uh, received a rating of 99.24% for an entire year of DOT inspections. So I know Teresa is uh, here as well. So we'll, we're going to set aside uh, some time to recognize them, and Teresa, I hope you'll be able to give a nice introduction for them. This is a remarkable score, and I know we'll learn more about that, so congratulations to them. And uh, we're still pumping out podcasts. Uh, I think it's it's really important. I'm sure I want to. I know I didn't ask you to talk about this, but you were instrumental in introducing uh, some of our teachers and students to Flurio, a virtual reality headset that children can wear and participate in different uh, enriching environments to practice communication skills social skills and life skills uh, so just this week I, I had a chance to interview uh, Logan and Brad and Caitlin and uh, listen and learn more about the virtual reality headset that's helping kids um, in a safe way uh, practice those skills so I don't know um, is there anything you want to cover? Well, you, know, you actually sent me an email so thank you for that and then um, you know I asked Brad who's our community director because it's something um, so we did pilot with uh, Patricia um, and Patricia Lyons now over at Youth Road for their 611 class. Um, the other um, uh, school that we chose was the Middle School Life Skills Program. Um, Brett, has, Brett has also expanded it over to, I think, two students at Kegabine, um, right, Felicia? And then there was a student that's um, not, um, she moved, but uh, piloted um, one at the high school as well. So we're looking at next year. Um, it was grant funded this year through one of my special ed grants. Um, Brett and I are actually looking at a um, technology grant that will uh, look toward the work talent group, mm -hmm. you know, to help us um, secure that grant. That grant is due October 1st. So we're looking to expand the program to, you know, into some of the other buildings as well. So it's very great. exciting. It's a short uh, podcast. It's right on our website under community. You can choose Inspiring Viking Values and listen if, it, uh, if it's of interest to you uh, and how some of these new technologies are helping our students uh, in multiple ways. So we want to thank everybody involved and, and, and wish them well as they continue with their efforts. And I think uh, Brett said there are about 15 students, I believe he said, that are using it throughout the district. Uh, our third graders came up for a field trip uh, to the high school to enjoy uh, listening to our musicians play various instruments as they contemplate and begin to think about what instruments they would like to learn in fourth grade. So we'd like to thank our music educators and uh, Mr. Reed there for hosting uh, all of the third graders. And uh, obviously we uh, celebrated the uh, very important and wonderful uh, recognition from uh, NAM and the best co communities for musical education here in Grand Island. Uh, Jessica Hutchings led a program last week uh, in helping to educate our parents on the dangers and the nuances of vaping. Uh, I do want to thank her uh, for her partnership with Kids Skating Drugs. Uh, and I want to thank uh, the board. Uh, many During COVID, we purchased uh, local live service that is uh, has video and audio uh, recording and live streaming capabilities in our auditorium. Uh, even though the in-person audience was very small, the uh, number of people that watched was about 190. Yeah. 190. yeah. And of course, uh, that is still available on our website. Um, so maybe we'll send out a link to the community just to say, if you missed it, here's the recording. Uh, again, super educational, eye-opening. Um, this is a photo that I took uh, of a hoodie. I know it's kind of bunched and it's not the best photo, but in the inside of the hoodie, the vape device is hidden in a small uh, pocket, and the, uh, the cord that you would use to tighten up your hoodie is an actual smoking device. So it comes out one end and you can, you can smoke you know, your vape in, in school or, you know, in the community, 
without much detection. So that, that may illustrate it a little better. So. I just saw one where it's a highlighter. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, there are... Um, and because we see the device, I saw the image the yeah. And of course, I, I think the most uh, important, there's a few important elements. It's first, you can see in the, the lower right-hand corner that a lot of these devices are being marketed to students and children. So when you see this orange crush, you know, uh, gas gain uh, box, um, you know, that isn't really being marketed to adults. And uh, New York State, along with several other states, recently won a judgment um, receiving about 500, well, less than $500 million, uh, a judgment against uh, Juul because they were marketing to kids. The most difficult uh, issue here is that other companies, knockoff companies, are creating all of these devices, and they're still marketing to children. So that uh, is very concerning. Uh, I know that Max and the teachers at Huth are doing a fantastic job in supporting one of our teachers who um, is just waiting uh, for an opportunity to have a double lung transplant. And uh, this teacher is just on call, and uh, it's uh, sure very nerve-wracking, but once the call is made, the teacher has to travel to the Cleveland Clinic to engage in that very intense uh, surgery and then be there for many months afterwards. So uh, the community of Grand Island has been very generous uh, using the GoFundMe uh, page, and I think that will open. And so people can um, donate, and I, and I do know that the goal originally was around 30000 but because of the donations, the goal has shifted. It's actually started like 3000 Okay. The first day, and they overcome that right, one day. So we wish her and her family all the best, and uh, we thank the community for uh, supporting her and her family. <coughs> um, you know, I made a silly post about uh, what would you like if you were a high school student again, what courses would you like to, to take in our high school? I had the opportunity to be conducting uh, evaluations in many, many different uh, classrooms across the district. And it was just fascinating to see this young man work and create this board. Uh, he was just doing such a great job. Uh, our students, this, these two students are creating a table that will be, um, that will include a river of resin down the center of the table. Uh, and I guess this is a popular technique now. Uh, but the amount of time, the intricate work involved, uh, and, and how collaborative these two students are in doing this work, I can't wait to see the finished product. So there's really a lot to celebrate in our schools. And our, uh, we have a unified basketball game. Uh, and if you've not been to a unified basketball game, uh, it's a dance party at, at, at halftime. Mark Gordon is plays the role of the DJ, and I think he was playing a song on Cupid, right, or a Cupid dance. Cupid Shuffle. And after the, oh, the Cupid Shuffle. <laughs> I used to be a DJ. It's been a while. <laughs> and after that song concluded, the young lady uh, from the basketball team of, uh, was it, uh, it wasn't that Rufield, it was... North Tonawanda, I think. What was it? I think it was NT. North Tonawanda, yeah. right. She did a prom proposal to our student, uh, Gabe, and uh, it, he said yes. So very, very, very cool. Yeah, very, very nice. So our students and our coaches uh, are doing a fantastic job. Um, the, it's packed, usually, with a lot of people coming to uh, experience this. And I, I'm just going to say this one young lady has been on the team for a few years. This was the most active. And the, and the most I've seen her participate in a comfortable level in many years. So it was just so much fun. Uh, and all of you met Reagan. <clears throat> She's in our top 10 uh, academically, and here she was uh, making a basket uh, for the team. So really a, a truly wonderful experience, just the epitome of sportsmanship and love and fun. And uh, these are pictures from, that Larry also took of the Youth Road music uh, concert, uh, just outstanding children performing with their teachers and uh, equally outstanding photographs.
I am celebrating a little bit of Larry. I, I, don't know, I guess he left, but look at this. Look at the quality of this photo. You know, it's just remarkable. The ball is right here, just before Anna Kurtzel hits it, and look at that that photo. Uh, just wonderful opportunities for our kids as they uh, fully embrace uh, the program here in Grand Island. And I do want to thank our teachers who are uh, putting a spotlight on kids uh, every week. They're doing a really good job celebrating our students. And don't forget, we do have a Viking tip line, so don't hesitate to use it if you can't get a hold of a trusted adult here in our school district. And as always, if you have questions, feel free to email the board at eoggi at gicsd.org. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. We do not have anything on our Board of Education report, and we did not have anyone sign up for the public comment session. General items not included in the agenda. So that brings us to Committee of the Whole items and information from the roundtable beginning with comment. I just wanted to say, yep. Yep. just want to say congrats again to Hillary. Look forward to working with you in years to come. Um, continue working with you in years to come. And a uh, quick shout out about the PTSA Academic Awards being May 19th in the morning. Uh, students and parents of the recipients uh, should receive letters in the mail informing them that they will be awarded. Forward to seeing everyone at the event. Sure. I just want to thank everybody um, out at the wellness committee. Um, the wellness night it was uh, a lot of fun, and um, we had, you know all the vendors turned out. It was a really great time. Um, so I think we had Decker come out and help. We had web leaders come out and help. Um, Honor Society come out and help. Uh, athletic students, athletic association. Um, you know, so just thanking all of them that came out and for me at the time and um, you know, maybe a lot of fun. Um, huge shout out actually to all the principals. I think everyone came, maybe except one, and not only did you guys come, but you participated in everything. Um, and Dr. Palachi, she was great because <laughs> nobody was dancing in the gym and she comes over and she's like, all right, uh, Mr. Lefthand, you're making an announcement. Five minutes. We're all going to the gym. We're all dancing. It was the same song. It was the Cupid Shuffle. And um, <laughs> she, she got everybody in there dancing. And I just love how all of you work together. Um, like, you didn't have to participate. You didn't have to do anything. But you, every one of you did. Um, Mr. Kula, he comes out sweating, playing pickleball. <laughs> it was great. And um, just you guys tried everything. But you also wanted to make it better. You wanted to help in any way you could. Um, I remember I had a kid from the Student Athletic Association. He was volunteering at the front, and um, she's like, "Let's go dance." I'm like, "You got the front, right? You're good." He's like 16 years old. He's like, "I'm like, I'm gonna go dance." So <laughs> I ran and danced, and um, it was just so much fun. So thank you all of you for participating and helping, and it was just really great. Thank you. Wanted to remind everybody to come out and vote next Tuesday, the 16th, from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. in the high school gymnasium. We do have electronic poll books this year, so that's something new. Uh, they were used um, last year for the Grand Island Town of Grand Island Museum. So it's electronic poll books, a little, little something different just to sign your name on. So hopefully it'll make it go a little quicker and there won't be long lines and the deadline for absentee ballots, um, we can take them up until 5 p.m. on Tuesday, May 16th. We have um, a mailbox available that you could put them in up until 5 p.m. on May 16th. It's located right outside of district office. So we'll see. I have a sign out there and everything. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I had the opportunity to attend the Unified Basketball Game this evening. Uh, great job, coaches. Mr. Gordon, great job with announcing. Um, it was so exciting. If you have not been to a Unified Game, you just have to get there. It is, it's great to see you know, everyone clapping for both teams, and the kids just love it. And the, the audience has a great time. There's a dance party, like uh, Dr. Graham said, in the middle. And what an exciting... Uh, what an exciting event. So um, thank you to our coaches and everyone who um, makes it happen. 
And then uh, thank you to Sherry for the Wellness Committee and all the work you did for that event. Um, that was a great event as well. And um, I have just a, another date to announce May 30th is our joint meeting with uh, the town of Grand Island, and that will be at the um, Grand Island Fort Room at 7 p.m. on May 30th. Um, I just want to ditto um, the uh, applause to Sherry and the Wellness Committee. I actually attended it. I do believe that maybe Dr. Graham and I's uh, blood pressure was a little <laughs> off just, that night. It was a little high. That's, that's true. <laughs> um, but it was a fantastic event, and as I walked around, there seemed to be a lot of um, community participation, which was great to see. Um, so kudos to all of you that were involved in that. It was, it was a huge success. Um, July 17th is the golf tournament for Gisba. I just put that out there because we just read um, 25 excellent applicants for the Gisba scholarships this year, and it's it's so exciting to see it come to fruition. You know, we work hard, we the kids work hard, we put on this event, we raise the money, and then we actually get to hand it out to students that are, are well deserving. And then it was a tough choice. We we picked five of 28, so um, it was a lot of reading. It's excellent to read because. You would tell learn so much about our students and where they're heading and what their um, inspiration was, what, what their aspirations are, whatever. Um, so come out and join us on um, July 17th. I also wanted to say um, we attended a dinner last uh, Tuesday, maybe was it was it Tuesday to celebrate uh, Mike Murray and our premier Annie uh, in the Western New York is Education Council. Um, service, service Council, um, always awesome to be able to uh, celebrate those that do an amazing job in their district. And um, this Thursday, we will be celebrating Mr. Fitzpatrick and all of his hard work. Um, so I look forward to spending the evening with your family on Thursday. And I think that's it. Thank you. Julie. I'm all set. Danielle. I'm all set. Mike. Just a quick happy teacher appreciation week to all of our teachers out there, those people who support teachers, those people who used to be teachers, the people who are benefiting from our teachers. Thanks. Uh, take the time to wish your teachers uh, say thank you and what they do for you. I know it seems like it's a day-to-day -day job, but it's a lot of work behind the scenes, and I'm sure they would appreciate you seeing that. On that same note, uh, May 10th is um, Nurse Appreciation Day, so make sure that you Thank your school nurses, especially since they've been doing triple duty um, the last couple weeks. Um, I wanted to say congratulations to Hillary um, and Jessica Hutchings and I are actually meeting with Youth Mental Health First Aid, the National um, Committee, and we will be doing the three-day training and training program in June. So hopefully the next board meeting that we have, um, I'll be able to tell you those dates. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I just have a couple of notes. Uh, Cheryl and I are going to get together with all of our speech language therapists on Friday. We're inviting um, the co-founder of a company in, um, I want to say Belgium, and the company is Save Labs. And uh, Eric, who's the co-founder, is coming to uh, meet with our speech teachers to introduce to them an application that he has created called Fluency Friends. And that application uses artificial intelligence to assist children from ages 5 to 10. Yep. And there are uh, some students in our schools who struggle with stuttering. And this Fluency Friends app will be given to us for free uh, so that our students, if given parent permission, uh, we'll be able to begin using it in school and all throughout the entire summer. Uh, it's a gamified app that is engaging and the students have to use their speech to make the characters move and do the, the correct things and not just have to hit the X and Y buttons on a, on, a, on a game controller. They have to be able to speak and that speech uh, will be monitored and uh, help to uh, move children on a quicker path to uh, improved speech and uh, decreasing stuttering. So we're really, really excited about this opportunity and uh, looking forward to uh, that, uh, that happening this Friday. In addition to that, um, the District Art Show begins Monday, 
uh, May 15th here at the high school. So parents and uh, faculty and the board can come uh, Monday uh, after school to uh, begin to experience the district art show. Of course, it will be available on Tuesday, probably winding down on Wednesday. And lastly, uh, I think this is our second year for an elementary track meet. And uh, we're, that'll be also happening on the 16th. So we look forward to seeing youth compete against Kegelheim uh, in an elementary track meet. So it should be a lot of fun. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, congratulations again. I just want to echo what everyone has said. Congratulations to Hillary. I'm very excited that um, you will be leaving our high school, and I'm looking forward to great things to continue at our at our high school in the future. Um, with that, I would like to ask for a motion to adjourn our regular board meeting at 8.26 p.m. So I'll have a second. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? No, I'm not objecting. Any abstentions? No. Motion carried. 7-0. Good night, everyone.